Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Intershutter Modeler. So in this video, you're going to follow along as I build my submission for the Halloween group build. This is for SciFiAnnecy.com. Uh, every October they put this on, and um, I originally intended for this to be a buddy build with my friend Mark Fraley, uh, which we're actually still going to do that buddy build. We're just going to postpone it to November rather than doing it now. Uh, the reason being he's just not quite ready to dive into that project because he's trying to finish up this other model kit for Model Palooza, which is an upcoming model show in Arizona, which happens the first week in November. So I came up with something else. Let me show you what I have in mind. So what we have here are two figure models. Uh, one is just the head of the Joker, and of course this is Batman, and I got these two at Wonderfest earlier this year. And you know, when you're walking around that show, you can't help but be inspired to try something else with figure models, or at least to um, experiment more with them. And so as I was uh, walking around at the end of the show, I had waited to purchase some stuff, and I'm glad I did because uh, when you're at a show like that, a lot of the vendors like to start discounting their stuff if they want some of the stuff to get moving along there. So I was able to purchase uh, this guy for about $15, and then this one was under 10 So let's kind of look at these individually. So I thought it was a nice clean sculpt of the superhero. Not a lot of defects on the surface, just some seams that we have to sand away. Um, but uh, this reminded me of a statue that I have in my collection. Um, let me just show you that statue here. So this is by Kotobukiya Art FX. This was produced a number of years ago. I don't really collect a lot of statues, but this particular one caught my eye. I really like the pose and the flowing cape and everything. And particularly, I like the colors. Uh, this was inspired by the Jim Lee version of Batman, so it has the uh, gray and blue paint scheme. And uh, as I said, this figure kind of reminded me of it. You can see the facial expression, or at least the design of the face is similar, and you can see even the suit is uh, designed about the same way. So that's what I'd like to do is to paint this, this blue and gray paint scheme. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as my guide. And then here we have now the face and head of the Joker. I just thought I had a lot of cool expression to this sculpt here, and I happened to find him in a bin full of uh, resin sculpts, and uh, I found him actually first before finding the Batman uh, sculpture. So for painting, I'm going to be just looking up reference photos. Uh, I found this one online so far. There's obviously a ton that you can find um, with regard to the comic books. So just a standard uh, paint scheme using the green hair and the white skin, of course. And and uh, So yeah, we'll see how this turns out. I, I was going to just um, do these uh, separately as just, uh, just a way to experiment with uh, figure painting, but um, uh, this particular concept, we can utilize both sculptures together. So here's a rough sketch of what I have in mind. We have Batman centered here on this base, and behind them is going to be this backdrop in which I'll create these city buildings here, and then we'll mount Joker's head behind him. And it's just a scene where Batman's being tormented by the Joker. These are wood pieces that I found at Hobby Lobby, and uh, they sell for about four bucks a piece or so. And what's nice about these is the, the stuff's thin enough to be able to score with, a, with an X-Acto knife. You keep uh, cutting, and you can just you know, snap it off. And so this is already cut into the dimensions that I want. So we're going to be mounting this backboard here and Batman will be situated right here. For the buildings in the background, I think I'm going to use uh, this styrene plastic. Of course, this is a sheet styrene from Evergreen Scale Models and just create some shapes that will resemble buildings here. And then the Joker's head will be mounted about right here. So whether I'll do any lighting, uh, I'm not sure I'll do any lighting on the backdrop here, but I think it'd be cool to maybe put some bright LEDs that will shine up at this uh, scene here. Uh, what I also am going to do is decorate the side here with some styrene plastic and uh, detail it to look like uh, the top of a building. So that's the idea. Let's go ahead and get started and we'll see if this all works out. So, uh, for the most part, as I mentioned, it's a pretty clean sculpt, but I did have to uh, sand some imperfections and fill in some gaps there. There is going to be one major gap now as I glue on the arm. You can see it's going to be right here. So rather than just using putty to try to cover that, I'm actually going to try to use epoxy putty, which is something I'll be doing uh, with the buddy build, so this will be good practice for that. Uh, the other arm joins right here, which isn't too bad. It's right where the shoulder muscle meets the bicep here. So... Um, We'll probably just cover this gap here with uh, regular putty. And then we have the hand that uh, I'm not sure why they didn't mold this together. I wish they did, but they didn't. So we have to uh, join this hand here. And same thing, I'm going to try to use epoxy putty to cover this uh, gap as well. So um, what we've got then is epoxy sculpt putty. Now, if you've not worked with this stuff before, it's a two-part mixture. You just mix half and half of each uh, side here. And... Um, we're going to put it onto the joint, and we have some water. 
so what you do is you basically uh, mold it into position, uh, you put it into there, and then you use water to kind of smooth it into place. And uh, the, the idea here is to obviously make it smooth enough to where you have this nice transition between your putty and the piece, so it looks like it's part of the piece. Now, um, <clears throat> after reviewing some YouTube videos here, I uh, went ahead and went to Michael's to get some of these other tools. And you can certainly do this with your hands and fingers, uh, but they do make tools for sculpting. And uh, these here have these rubber pieces at the tip that uh, don't stick to the material that you're working with. So they're, they have various shapes uh, to get into little uh, tight spaces and stuff. So uh, we'll be using this as well. And so yeah, let's uh, see what happens here. I can't wait to get started. So what we're going to do is uh, take a piece of this here and we will roll it. Now you can use your hands without gloves, but uh, you know, I've, I've watched a few different videos. Some use gloves, others don't. But uh, since I have some skin allergies and stuff, I just probably best if I use gloves. So 50-50 mixture, and um, one trick was to take one uh, little ball of each and then press them together, and you can kind of see if you have the same amount or not. This one is a little softer, um, but the key is to make sure you have a sim similar amount. And then once you do that, we're going to roll it together and knead it together. It kind of activates material. Now you do have about one to three hours it says here um, that you can have with working with this stuff before it starts to harden. And when it does harden, it hardens rock solid. Alright, so let's go ahead and start putting our stuff into these areas. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Let me see if I can get that in the camera there. And um, actually, I think the gloves work really well because you're not leaving fingerprints. And so, what I think I'm going to do now is just let this dry. And you can see, as I was putting this on here, I'm trying to retain some of the detail in here, the lines of his muscles and so forth. And um, just kind of using a few different tools to try to retain some of that detailing there and some of that contour. So, uh, what we're going to do then is let this dry and then we'll sand it so we can get a bit smoother transition, but I think it worked out really well. So, as you can see, you can use different tools, you can use these sorts of things, um, but brushes work as well. I just got some inexpensive brushes there at Michael's and you just wet your brush and you know it's really cool because once you wet the material it's, it becomes really soft and you can you know shape it into what you want there so yeah this works great so we're gonna go ahead and try it on the other arm here okay as you saw I put a bit too much at the beginning all I really wanted to do was to cover this joint and so as you can see I just use different things like toothpick here just to take some of this off as long as it's wet though it comes right off and then, um, you know, it seems like the best thing to do is just to use your hands to shape this stuff. So yeah, I think it's going to work great. So I'm going to go ahead and give this some time to dry, and then we'll sand it. In the meantime, we'll go back to the Joker head here. So getting back to the Joker's head while Batman dries there, uh, you can see I've uh, primed him with a Stino Res Gray primer. And I think I'm going to lighten this up a bit, though, before I start applying some of these skin tones here. So I'm going to use a little bit of this um, Stino Res White so I lined them up a little bit here with the Stunner Rails White Primer. I didn't want to go too light. Uh, I just wanted a lighter base to start with. So we're going to apply then the uh, base color, which is going to be a Tester's Light Gray. Um, and then the shadows will be a, um, the darker grays that I'll be using here from Vallejo. And then we'll work our way up to more of the bright whites for the highlights. So I'm going to apply the base color first with an airbrush. The rest of it's going to be done by hand with just uh, regular paintbrushes. So I did apply the Tester's Light Gray first, but it looked a bit too bright, so I toned it down with Vallejo's Pale Gray. 
So we're going to start here now with our base color. And I think next thing we're going to do is go ahead and start applying the shadows. So what I'm using as my guide here as I apply these shadows is this picture here that I took of the sculpt with light from above. And so um, I'm applying now this uh, Game Color brand from Vallejo. It's a somber gray. And I've added a glaze medium just to help with the blending process. Alright, so this is how he's looking so far. I'm uh, satisfied with the way the paint's blending together here. And it's just really good pra practice to learn how to blend paints. I always admire people who can do this with a brush. So that's what this is all about, is really just a learning process on how to do this with these different types of medium. And um, yeah, I, I think it's working out uh, pretty well so far. So um, this kind of reminds me of... Uh, how some people do this all in black and white. Someday I'd like to try something like that. But uh, what we're going to proceed forward with now is doing some of the highlights. And um, then we'll get to the hair and all the rest of his other features here. So let's move along. All right, you can see I'm making some progress here. Uh, I went ahead and moved on to the mouth and the tongue. And so the paint I used for that was this vermilion from Vallejo mixed with some white. And then for the darker shades in the interior, I used... Uh, a little bit of black to darken it up a bit just to give us some of those various shades. So we applied the highlights and the shadows inside the mouth. I'm going to let this dry before we move on to the teeth and then we'll start getting to the hair here shortly. Alright, so this is how he turned out. I'm very pleased with the uh, end results here. I didn't tape the entire thing because uh, it's really just me painting, but um, let me just go over some highlights with you here. So this is the application of the hair color, and uh, the base color is appropriately called Sick Green. This is a game color by Vallejo. To uh, darken it up, I actually ended up adding the Panzer Gray uh, just to make it a bit darker for the shadows, the streaks, uh, the dark streaks in his hair. And then for the lighter color, uh, I ended up using the yellow-green from Vallejo. As for the eyes, um, just uh, basically went back to the same colors. Again, the sick green, just a mixture of applying the... Actually, I applied the Panzer Dark Gray first. And then over that, I applied the uh, just a, a little bit of the sick green. And then over that, I applied the yellow-green. And uh, after I was satisfied with the mix that I was getting there and how the eyes were looking, uh, I ended up uh, dotting the pupils and then also the uh, corneal reflex. That's just the reflex off the, uh, off the eyeball there. And uh, then I applied a, uh, a light wash of, of the Vermeerian uh, mixed with white. So it created a pink color and added that to the uh, lids as well as to the corners of each eye. And then the final touch was just the application of some gloss coating there. Well, so far everything is turning out well. Uh, what I love about this particular sculpt is that it looks very much like uh, what you see in the comic books. It's a nice uh, caricature of the Joker. Um, so that's really what I used to model him after was uh, what I've seen for years in the comic books. Um, and I, I think it turned out pretty well so far here. So hopefully Batman will go just as smooth. We'll pick up in part two. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here so it doesn't drag on too long. And uh, so we'll wrap up with Batman and the display and I'll show you the completed project in the next video. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, as usual, leave them here on my YouTube channel or contact me at intersetamodeler at gmail.com. See you in the next one.